Yes, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, medical oncologist meeting. Uh, being a surgeon, I uh, do not understand all the meetings you had already, but um, this meeting is about lateral lymph nodes, and the question is how to prevent the local recurrence in enlarged uh, lymph nodes. I must say that uh, this is a debate which is ongoing since we started preoperative radiotherapy. There's a debate ongoing between the East and the West. The, the Western surgeons say, okay, give me radiotherapy for, before surgery, and I will and I don't consider these lateral lymph nodes. And on the other hand, we have the Asian surgeons, especially the Japanese surgeons, who say, okay, you have to look in, into these lateral lymph nodes. If you remove them, in many cases, you will find positive lymph nodes. And I must say, one of, the, one of my co-authors is Miranda Kusters. She was in those days when we started doing TME surgery, still a medical student, and she stopped her study, medical, uh, medical study, and for a year she learned Japanese. And she went to the National Cancer Institute in Tokyo, reviewed all the medical uh, files of patients who have received rectal cancer treatment without any radiotherapy and compared them to uh, patients with um, uh, radiotherapy in, the, in, the, in Europe, in the Netherlands, in the TME study, and there was no difference. So it kept going on, this question. A little bit about the uh, embryology. During, during the development of the fetus, you can see that the lateral lymphatics are a very prominent structure. So why shouldn't they be prominent in adults? So the, the idea of upward spread, we looked for many years only at lymph nodes in the mesorectum, but we learned that they are not so prognostic as we always thought. But we also have the concept of lateral spread, and long, long time it was just the lateral spread which was thought to be dealt with, with um, preoperative radiotherapy. So if we look at the lateral compartment of lymph nodes, you can see if you walk through the pelvis that uh, we have actually three compartments. The iliac vessel compartment, the obturator compartment, the green compartment, and the internal iliac vein compartment. So these are the three compartments of lateral lymph node, and I think uh, I will make it, I hopefully make it clear to you that uh, it's important to consider all these apartment separately when describing the MRI scan. So this is a typical obturator node. I think um, maybe Alec will correct me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so th this, these are the typical nodes we are, we are looking at. Not the nodes in, in, the, in the mesorectum, but the nodes outside of the mesorectum, the nodes which are not primarily in our surgical field. So these are the nodes we have to look at. So concluding Western surgeons, Lateral lymph nodes are not important because we deal with them with radiotherapy. We see most of these lateral lymph nodes in conjunction with advanced tumors. They will occur in a later stage of the disease. It's very rare that you have an early rectal cancer with a lateral lymph node. And uh, the Asian surgeons, they thought, okay, well, you know, lateral lymph node, if they are present, it's still a local disease, which I think is also an important distinction between uh, surgeons in the East and the West, um, because it was, we had a, a kind of nihilistic approach in, in the past years to these lateral lymph nodes, because they were considered as metastatic disease and not as local disease. So there, there is also a point. There have been uh, various studies from the East looking at these lateral lymph nodes and they say if you don't deal correctly with them you will see more lateral recurrences. So in the West I think the etiology of, of uh, local, local recurrence in the pelvis was contributed to poor surgery. So we had quite a lot of attention to the mesorectal fascia, uh, mesorectal plane and uh, the, the surgeons were held responsible for the development of local recurrence, and it has been for a long time. 
uh, incomplete removal of the mesorectum, not a total TME, but a partial TME with tumor deposits in the mesorectum were held uh, responsible for local recurrences. There were, um, uh, there were anastomotic leakages in which tumor cells also could reside. And again, this was held responsible for the development of local recurrences. But since surgery has become quite a lot better, we see a new kind of recurrence. We see the, the lateral uh, recurrence in, in the pelvic sidewall. It's more and more uh, this recurrence that we have to deal with. So this is from, from, the, uh, uh, from Korean uh, um, research that they say, OK, if you have lateral lymph nodes, if they are present, there is a direct relation between the chance of um, development of a lateral recurrence and the size of this lymph node. So this is, a, this, this is a typical recurrence uh, which probably has originated from, a, from a, a positive lymph node which was left behind. So there have been some studies. Um, Miranda Kusters, my co-author on this, she, she started some studies in, in Oxford and in Eindhoven where we looked at actually at these lateral lymph nodes. And what we did see was that size indeed matters. And really, in this small series, we couldn't say anything else but uh, about size. And this is uh, the result of the Oxford series. Uh, quite a lot of uh, probability of development of a lateral recurrence if the size was large enough and more than 10 millimeters. So the same we did in our uh, rectal cancer center where we looked um, also into this problem. We all reviewed all the MRI scans. And again, um, size was an important issue. EMVI as, uh, was another important issue. But the, the thing, we, what we did find in our series was that EMVI predicted a metastatic disease and lateral lymph nodes predicted local recurrence. So there were two, this, these are two different entities. Uh, so this is what I said. If you have EVI, more or less more metastatic disease. Th this was our hypothesis. Lateral lymph node do give rise to uh, lateral recurrences. Size was the only thing we could find to predict. And lateral lymph nodal disease is not a, a signature of metastatic disease or starting metastatic disease, but rather the presence of EMVI was. So the idea that was that maybe we should deal with these lateral lymph nodes in a different manner. Just not accept them in the primary uh, uh, disease, but treat them. So. Uh, there, uh, there is a lymph node consortium. It is thanks to Miranda Kusters, indeed, who traveled uh, along the world during a fellowship uh, to, uh, which gave her a grant to do so. And 12 centers worldwide uh, collected advanced rectal cancers and looked at it over a period of five years, and all the MRIs which were involved were reviewed in a central way. These are the centers that, which were... Um, there, and you can see this is the, the publication, which was um, by the end of last year. And what we did see, we, 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 it was a very heterogeneous approach. Worldwide, there is no standard approach. So, but as we had a good standardized MRI imaging, we were able to look at what the results were of these different approaches in the different countries. So these are the most important um, things that we did find. Uh, there were institutes that did lateral lymph node dissections, either as a, in a prophylactic way or indicated if they thought that there was tumor residing in the, uh, in the nodes. And the outcomes were quite uh, astonishing. So you can see that if you have an enlarged node, 10 millimeter or larger, you can see that there was a 35% five-year lateral local recurrence rate. 
neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy did not compensate for that. If the patients, and this is, uh, this is a seven millimeter margin, if you had neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy but no lateral lymph node dissections, these patients will develop in an, an unexpected high number lateral uh, recurrences. So this did not predict we did find that this, this large, in this large study, it did, didn't predict for uh, extra metastasis. So if you look at seven millimeters, again, we did find the, the same thing, lateral node, uh, lateral lymph nodes of seven millimeters and above did predict the occurrence of lateral, uh, lateral, uh, lymph, uh, lateral recurrences. But what we also could do in this study was look at those um, institutes that took away the positive lateral lymph nodes or took away all the lymph nodes larger than seven millimeters. And what we did see is that a lateral lymph node dissection could reduce the number of um, uh, local recurrences from almost 20% to something like 5%. So another, invest, another publication which was just two days ago uh, online, it's, uh, it's looking at, and what about, you know, a little bit more about if you have a response to radio chemotherapy. So most of these patients that were in this study had restaging after neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy. And the, most of the nodes did disappear what we also learned was that uh, it was not in all the areas the same. So the iliac nodes were, behaved different than the nodes along the internal iliac vein. And the opterata nodes, again, did behave differently. So the, the lower the nodes were positive, the higher the local recurrence rate was. Um, so again, you see if, if um, lateral lymph node dissection was omitted in the internal iliac uh, uh, nodes, then you can see that the uh, local recurrence rate was up to 50%. And if it was done, if a lateral lymph node dissection was performed, you can see that the increased risk was reduced quite heavily. This is again shows you that there is a difference of prognosis in where these lymph nodes occur. So it's important for the radiologist to tell you where these nodes reside. So the discussion points we have, we have no solution for this. We have an idea, lateral lymph nodes are important in our management of primary advanced cancer. Uh, there seems to be a reason to deal with them whether you do it with surgery or whether you will do it with a boost of radiotherapy or whether you will use induction chemotherapy to increase the number of responders, we still don't know. And then another hot issue is probably that lateral lymph node dissection is not an easy procedure. It's a procedure that should be done in a regular way, and it's quite a rare disease. If you look, we needed 12 centers worldwide uh, looking at, at their cases, and we could collect a few hundred of cases. So it means that in a, in a standard hospital, you will see one or two cases a year. So we need a prospective trial, and I can tell you there will be a prospective trial. It's the LANOREC trial, lateral nodal recurrence in rectal cancer. It, uh, it's a trial which will be uh, observing uh, different treatments, and the next step is probably to look at uh, if we can randomize this. So this is the lateral lymph node consortium which did help to collect all these, uh, all these data. Thank you very much.